All right, let's talk about everybody's favorite subject, Austrian art, art house movies, because that's what we watch as teenagers. Uh, okay, Mikhail Haneke. To me, Mikhail Haneke is, at least to me, uh, one of the most important directors out there right now. Um, I feel like he's one of the most important directors, one of the greatest directors to watch and study when it comes to, like, you know, using the essentials in storytelling, you know, minimalizing and not exploiting details, and most importantly, um, leaving room for the audience to make up their own conclusions and ideas of what the film is about. You know, to me, his, he's up there, when it comes to those things, just those specific things, he's up there with, like, Stanley Kubrick, Alfred Hitchcock, um, Krzysztof Kieslowski, I'm not sure if I pronounced that right, um, the guy who made the Three Colors trilogy, to me, he's great, and... Right now, for me, The Piano Teacher is kind of his peak when it comes to his filmmaking. Maybe hidden, um, possibly a more. Um, the White Ribbon is no exception to this. This is really, really good. It's, and it's definitely Mikhail Haneke's style. You know, it's a film without closure or an answer, even though it desperately needs one. Um, it's not necessary, but the audience, it's kind of a film that be makes the audience beg for an answer or some closure, but it doesn't give the audience one. You know, it simply builds an atmosphere that's completely impenetrable, which kind of becomes the whole point of the film. It, right off the bat, from the first scene, a man violently falls from a horse. That's the first scene. That's the first thing we see. It sets the tone immediately and the film kind of goes from there um, but not before it fleshes out the town the characters and the relationships that the characters have with each other you know Mike Mikhail Haneke as much of a violent and sober and in-your-face director as he is he's not stupid he understands that you need to flesh out the basics in order to really manipulate them to create something more um, so from there, after fleshing out everything, he starts to build, one by one. There's a lot of children crying and moaning in this movie. Um, multiple deaths, multiple excruciatingly disgusting and sad deaths. Um, violent acts, very random violent acts um, done to children. Um, also just random acts of aggression, revenge, suicide, um, oppressive religious upbringing, which is always fun to watch. Um, and even a sense of love, but it's the kind of love that comes from this carnage of morality, you know. Um, it really starts to play with your standard. The, the guy who falls from, from, from his horse in the beginning of the movie, obviously you, you start to have some sympathy towards him because he has a family and he's hurt and whatnot. But then later on, you kind of learn that he's a fucking dick. He's an absolute jerk and... Much darker secrets, you know, start to be exposed. They they come to surface. They start they start to surface, and it really starts to play with your um, moral standard, which is what um honestly Mikhail Haneke loves doing. He loves really kind of manipulating, playing, and teasing um people's moral standards, making them question what's right and what's wrong, and who's not who's a good person. Or, you know, what is morality? How how do we sympathize a person that we can't sympathize after we know certain secrets of of his past and of, of his actions. That's what he does. And th in this film, with a certain character, he does that also. So with all of that, the film constantly starts to build this somber atmosphere, this really dark and bleak atmosphere. And I, um, I feel like Haneke then starts to focus on why all of this is happening, why all this random acts of violence, why, why this revenge, suicides, why, why, why these deaths... And why these, you know, why these violent acts towards children are happening. And I think one of the main things he, main things he tries to focus on is this, this sense of lack of freedom that these people have. You know, that come, this lack of freedom that comes from suspicion of others and the fear of power. Um, and also this very human but disgusting sense of jealousy and lust. Um, he tries to bring this into focus more so by um, showing you a lot of the scenes of the the really oppressive religious upbringing that the kids go through in this movie, or the extremely sober and brutal attitude in its violence and 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 it's, and, 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 uh, and in its insults and the way people treat each other, um, even kind of um, destroying relationship 
relationships that seem to be immune, that seemed to be immune to this sense of, you know, maliciousness and whatnot. There's this landlord character in this movie who isn't really in the movie a lot, but his marriage and his, you know, his marriage to his wife and his family, family just seems like such an impenetrable power, but even that relationship starts to crumble. And, the, and Mikhail Haneke really starts to show you that nothing's immune to this maliciousness and this really um, macabre mood that the film is trying to go for. Um, and all of this is kind of emphasized um, by con by con being contrasted with beautiful, beautiful long takes, extremely gorgeous bellatar ish black and white compositions, and these beautiful, intensely beautiful landscapes. Um, but the film isn't all just gloom and doom. You know, Haneke is smart enough to understand that without, you know, light, without happiness, without some sense of sereneness and, you know, joy, you know, without all of that, there is no dark. So he needs to kind of bring certain happy moments into the movie to, to emphasize the dark side of the film as well. Um, so there is a love story in the middle of it all. And the love story is actually really pure and innocent. And to a certain, certain extent, it feels much more genuine and serene because of the film's main subject matter. Um, um, the, it, it really, it, it kind of involves this main character who's a teacher at this little, in this little town. But even that, somehow Haneke, Haneke uses that relationship and somehow he manipulates it into the, the destruction of the immuneness that the main teacher characters seem to have to the moral carnage that the town is going through. Somehow he, he makes the teacher vulnerable by making him go through this relationship and it really he really starts to as a director Haneke starts to play with his fears the fear of the teacher the the, the fear that he has of commitment of of, be, of being a caring person and the prospect of a family um and he start and obviously the teacher starts to really worry about all of this and somehow he projects all these fears onto the town because at the end, and this is a slight spoiler, but the film, by the way, the film is kind of about all this really bad stuff happening in this little town, and it's about them trying to find who who's doing all of this. And in the end, they don't tell you who does it. Uh, like I said, it doesn't give you any closure. But at the end, the teacher kind of assumes, or at least makes the theory that the children are doing it. Um, so he blames the children. And I feel like this is um, him kind of projecting his own fears of commitment and um, a fam building a family household onto the town. So the f by doing this, Haneke is kind of really making the main character, the teacher character, a very vulnerable, vulnerable character to the moral carnage that's happening in the town, even though before that, that wasn't what he was going through. So... I don't know. To me, that with him, he's saying that moral carnage does not have any boundaries. It can affect anybody who's ever so slightly morally vulnerable, and that, that's a pretty powerful thing to do, man. Um, now the film, like I said, ends without any conclusions. Um, to me, this brings a similar effect of you know not explaining Michael Myers's motive um, or motifs uh, for killing other people in Halloweens. Um, you know, sometimes people are cruel and we can't help it. Um, and we can't stop it. Um, and we really can't do anything about it. And somehow because it doesn't give any conclusions, because it doesn't give any reasonings for these acts of violence and whatnot, the, it kind of adds a bleakness and a helplessness to it all. Which, which really emphasizes the point of the film. Moral carnage does not have any boundaries, and you cannot stop it. Um, this film, more so than most um, Mikhail Haneke movies, seems to be really talk. Seems to be really focusing and emphasizing the dark side of human nature, and just how unstoppable and how helpless we become in front of it. Um, I think it's really good. I th I think this is. Um, I don't know what to say. I feel like this is one of the more darker movies. And it's definitely more subtle. Like, not it's not like funny games where the violence is just in your face. No, there are very sparse moments of extreme violence in, he in here. 
but he the the way he's trying to express this idea of the dark side of human nature is way way more subtle and way way more personal and way way more human than Funny Games. Funny Games was more of an exploitation movie. This is him really philo philosophically and slowly going through and crumbling down every single person's soul. Now, does is the film perfect? Not really. Um, it does have some flaws, but I I'm not sure if they're flaws or not. It's just it's just the way I saw the movie. At times, I had a hard time relating to anything that the film was doing. Um, the sheer raw maliciousness of the characters and just the whole the the things that happened in general felt very alienating instead of like feeling human and whatnot. Um, I just felt like an observer. I, I wasn't really able to put myself into the movie. So what I'm really saying here is that um, there was kind of a disconnect, um, which is a problem with most movies, which, which is a problem that I have with a lot of films. A lot of films really try to just become its own. It kind of lives in its own bubble, and I'm not really able to penetrate it. And I usually enjoy films that I am able to penetrate. That, that sounds weird. Um... I enjoy films that I'm able to put myself... Uh, nah, um... I like films that I can relate to. That, that's the best way I can put it. But here's the thing. I feel like that disconnect might be intentional. Because, you know, it's shot in black and white. And its time period is right before the modern age. I feel like Mikao Haneke wanted to set this movie in the color... In the color... And in a period where you're supposed to feel this disconnect. You're not supposed to be a person within the movie to observe and relate to what, what, what's happening around you. No, you're supposed to be an observer. You're supposed to be an observer of this moral carnage happening in this movie. And somehow, because there's such a disconnect, you feel the inhuman, in, inhumanness of it all. And... Maybe we're supposed to simply be an observer with this movie. I'm not really sure. The disconnect felt very awkward at times. That's just me, but I feel like it might be intentional. So I'm not really sure what I'm really thinking about that right now. I'm not sure if it's a flaw. But overall, it's clearly a great film. And it's a great film about the immorality that comes from trying to trying too hard to keep one's morality intact. Which is a very hard top topic to deal with, but here, Mikhail Hanek is a really patient director that where he just goes through every single detail and character and shocking event after shocking event that somehow he builds this impenetrable atmosphere that fe almost feels natural to be dealing with such a theme and topic and whatnot. Um, it's great. I guess that's what I'm trying to say. It's a four out of four. It, it should have... It totally deserves all the awards that it won at the Cannes Film Festival in 2009, I believe. I am sweating like a mother motherfucker. This room is hot as goddamn hell. And it, it's technically like, um, we're having kind of the summer weather already right now So in, in Korea. So, this is fucking natural. The White Ribbon. Four out of four. Mikhail Hanek is a genius. Bye.